All right, um, 365 days of horsemanship, um, day 32. Very interesting day today. Um, I did not have very much time, um, which in the last couple of weeks has meant, you know, like filler days where I come and I, I'm like, hey, but I don't really feel like I have a plan and it's all kind of like, eh. um, and I try and make the best of it and find good things about it and make sure that it's, you know, at least neutral, um, if not good. Um, and yeah, I'm like super tired today. <laughs> I'm doing houses all weekend and I was at work all day today. So yeah, I kind of had the plan in my head that I would come up and I would do my freedom based training and I would just um, reinforce what I've been doing over the weekend and really um, consolidate that learning. So I came to Lawrence first. Um, he had a couple of nice focus changes. Um, it, I think that with him definitely, and I knew there would be a difference for him between being at the clinic versus being in the field, um, because definitely even though he was not um, really concerned at the clinic, which is amazing, obviously, especially considering how concerned he's been in the past, he that situation will have like considerably increased his like stress arousal um, and he was much more curious much more quickly um, and I did I did know that that was going to reduce um, when everybody was gone and it was just him um, and I like we normally are in his herd so I definitely and I definitely could feel the difference in the energy between um, yesterday at the clinic and today like yesterday there was a lot more curiosity there was a lot more things going on today it was like focus on the grass and then almost like irritation if I distracted him from the grass which I imagine kind of comes under concern um, but I also think that it is just kind of it's kind of opened my eyes to the fact that I think I just need to build a little bit more trust in the relationship I don't think that I have offered him as much flow because um, I've been doing this like consistent leadership with him where we go out and we do things and I think just the balance with him has just not been quite right. Um, and I think I just need to commit to more flow. It is difficult with him. I think I find I find his energy harder to be happy in. Um, like in some ways being in flow with Mia when she's like... I mean, well, I think being in focus with any... Uh, being in flow with any horse who's more interactive is more interesting than being in flow with a horse who is like almost like actively ignoring you like actively staying in freeze which I definitely felt like Lawrence was doing today and I think I just kind of didn't really have time to play with it so much um and I didn't want to go too quickly into too much supportive leadership because um I don't know I guess I just didn't want to feel like I was putting that pressure on him um but who knows maybe that would have been the right choice um maybe me walking around more would have been good i don't know so i'm gonna have to think about that maybe that's something i'll come back with tomorrow um so i think it was it was and definitely as well i could see him saying no a little bit more um like I was working a little bit with the rocking because Elsa had said that she thought that the thing I needed to work on next was the yields um so I started with the rocking um and then it was almost like like I did it too like wrong on one side and then I could feel that he was kind of turning away from me and yeah so I think there's definitely I yeah definitely still have that feeling like our like bandwidth is is small like the amount that he trusts me um and the amount that he's like willing to do things with me is quite small and I think it's about like proving that I can make him feel better right um so yeah but I think it is also about too much comfort um but I don't think I, I almost don't think he's like ready for the rocking I think there's too much concern in the rocking but then maybe I just need to bring it back to a place where I can just have my hand on him 
until he feels better um which is potentially where i'll go tomorrow maybe that's a good plan for tomorrow is um coming close because i know he prefers it when i'm closer um and work work with just having my hand on those places and uh, just moving around putting my hand on those places until he feels better um and just see how that goes so maybe that's the plan for tomorrow with him so that's kind of nice to have a plan um with mia it was a really interesting session actually a really interesting session um i came in the field um actually yesterday at the end of elsa's um we had such a good last session and then I ended with a mistake, which I realised afterwards. Um, so she was really engaged at the end of the session. I went to get the holder. She was engaged with me with that. She was playing with me with that. Um, and then she wanted to leave. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, let's do your plan. That sounds like a great plan. And we left the round pen. And I did not think at all about the fact that there were still all the horses in the other round pens. And then immediately she came out, she felt really unsafe and really like pressured and claustrophobic between those two horses. And the stress went up and she's like going into flight and trying to get away. And so that was kind of like, that was the first mistake. But then I think I could have made better choices after that. The next mistake I made was I then went to the, went to the field with her and took the halter off straight away at the gate. And she like gallops back up to her herd, like straight away, like, I need to go to them to feel safe. And what I should have done is gone up there with her. What I should have done is walked her all the way up there with the halter and taken the halter off up there. Um, and that would have helped her to feel like that I understand her needs um, in that moment and that I was a better leader. Um, yeah, she definitely was not as stressed as she's been previously. She definitely trusts me more in those situations, but I also could have done a better job. Um, and ideally, I don't think I'd have, I should have put her in that situation to begin with. I should have just grazed her with the halter on and done her plats and then turned her out after everybody else would have been the ideal situation. But that's okay. You know, the most important thing is that I made the mistake and I learned from it, right? Um yeah so I came up today and as soon as I came into the field she's like looking at me so I'm stopping and being in flow and then she's going back to the hay and I'm walking up and she's stopping and looking at me and then I'm you know in flow and then I'm stopping and looking at somebody and I, I made it all the way up to her and I wasn't really sure how close to get um and I kind of wanted to play around with with distance work a little bit and just try and influence the focus changes um which was actually going really well and she was doing quite a lot of focus changes when I was at kind of like a sort of semi-long distance, not like ages away, but um, definitely a good sort of probably 50 metres or so. Um, wow, well, 40 metres. Oh, 40 foot, sorry. Don't know what I'm talking about. About 40 foot, about 40 foot. And um, that was kind of going okay. And then she moved off the hay um and that felt like she was kind of walking away from me and so I wanted to take that as my cue not to move closer I was kind of thinking about that and and kind of something clicked for me that she, potentially it's quite offensive to her that people would assume that she wants them in her space and I think that part of why she is the way she is with the horses is because she has control of where they are like she has control of them being in her space or not. And if I'm thinking about it, like, from a trauma perspective, which I often do with her, because I think a lot of her behaviour at the moment is is trauma response, right? To feeling so unsafe. Like, there's so I, ju I just feel this, like, intense sense of trauma from her. Um, and, and if I'm thinking about it from that perspective, I'm thinking, okay, well human beings have have forced her to have them in her space and she like shut, shuts that down right like she shuts it down because like they have dominated her into allowing them in her space and so then I think with the horses it's like she wants total control over anyone being in her space all the time because like fundamentally other beings being in her space has been bad for her right historically um especially because you know I think her upbringing when she was a youngster I don't think she spent a lot of time with other horses I think she was socialized very much so her early experiences of like other beings being in her space was usually unpleasant so I kind of just wanted to play a little bit with this idea of allowing her to 
or listening to her opinions about the distance between us which was really interesting and basically what I did was any time that her head was turning towards me I made focus changes I stayed at the same distance um I just kind of moved around and just tried every single spot at that distance and then if her head started to turn away from me um I would go into kind of like supportive leadership where I would be like walking around and doing things that were uncomfortable and kind of coming in and out of distances. So like sometimes coming in closer and sometimes going further away um, until I found a spot that I could be in that she felt better and then stopping there and going back into flow, um, which I think was quite powerful. Um, and that was kind of going okay. And then I came in, I decided to do one turn because I thought, okay, well, I, what I don't want to do is train her that if she keeps herself fixed on me, she can just push me further and further away, right? Like, I also do want to play with, like, the touching distance because I think that's important that, like, she starts to feel okay about that, right? Um, and so I'm coming in, I'm coming past and I'm just stroking along her and it was like, I could, see, like, now I was looking for it. It's, like, so crazy. Like, once you notice something, once you're looking for something, like, you can't unsee it. Um, and I came in, I'm walking closer and closer and the head's going further and further away. And then I stroke down her back and she's like, and then like, you know, on the ground, on the ground, on the grass still, but it's like, you can really tell that she's like properly turning away, which is exactly the same thing that she does when you play with her in the arena. When I play with her in the arena, it's exactly the same thing where she's like this and she's turned away. And so that was really interesting. And so I came away and I thought, okay, that was, okay, so that was like too soon I need to think about that I'm not in a place where I have all day to play with that because it's you know it, it's tolerance like she's not like she's not walking away like she's tolerating it she's just not into acceptance she's not in a place where like she can be okay with me coming that close and not feel the need to like turn away and um yeah so I so I then I played around a little bit more and I noticed around the front, she was more comfortable with me, strangely, considering that like horses can't really see as well at their front end. Um, well, certainly right in front of them anyway. So I thought it was really interesting. But she did seem to be like, she didn't feel like she needed to put me in one eye or the other. Like she was quite happy with me being there and the eyes were kind of forward. And she, it just felt, it just felt less restricted. Like there's almost like this, I can feel when she's getting tight about it. And then when she's releasing, it just felt quite, quite relaxed at the front. Um and yeah and I was kind of playing around with that and just moving little bits and just trying to find all these little like minute changes and in, in flow and just like staying in flow and then taking a little step when something changed and taking a little step when something changed and then she is she came up to me she looked up and she was walking towards me and she walked towards me and like I held my hand out and like she sniffed my hand and then she walked straight by and that was like real curiosity. Like she was like, okay, I'm curious enough to come and see you, but I don't want to stay. And I could have like moved faster. Like she was in motion. I should have been in motion too. Um, I, I did, but it was not, it could have been smoother and I would be more prepared for that next time. But that was super interesting. Super, super interesting session. Um, really just, yeah, really just fascinating to see her that was, I think that was a conversation that really needed to be opened between us. Um, and it's definitely something that I would like to work on now. The challenge, as with all of these things, is once you notice something, you kind of can't go back. And the challenge for me is going to be putting that aside some days and saying, today we're doing insistent and dominant training. Today is not a... Today... It's not that today is not a freedom-based training day because one of the things I think I've really taken from this clinic that's confirmed it for me, which is kind of where I was already at, but like having Elsa talk about it in such a like clear way has really like cemented it for me. There is freedom and there is training and it's a spectrum, right? And you can have more freedom in your training and like more training in your freedom and all freedom and all training and like there's anything in between. So it's not that like for me now, like every day there is some level of freedom based training. Like there's some level of freedom in the training that I'm using 
the difficulty i think is like having those days continuing to have those days where the freedom is less and the training is more um yeah and i th i think because i really like it you know in the ideal world <laughs> where I could pause time and there was no time and I had endless, endless time um, and nothing would change and she wouldn't age or, you know, the season wouldn't go by or I didn't have other things I wanted to do, you know. Um, I would I would now be doing this freedom-based training and the, the, the high levels of freedom until we got to a place where she felt comfortable with me being close to her right but that's you know then it's a long way from that to i feel comfortable with you holtering me you know it's a long way away from that like all of these things so it's like you have to create these boundaries for yourself um and accept that like you can't fix everything and you can acknowledge those things and work on them whenever you can and every time you do work on them i think you know you are putting money in the bank and i definitely feel like i put money in the bank today having that conversation with her and saying hey today how do you feel and i think um definitely I think that's what I need to remember is like some days you know I'm just the leader and we just have to make decisions and if you don't feel okay about it like I'm sorry we can talk about that but we do have to do it and then other days it's like I think just offering her that freedom which is kind of what I've been doing already but I feel like there's much more purpose now in that I feel like I have much more purpose in the freedom now where I know how to have those conversations I'm looking to have those conversations with her and listening to her about how she feels and helping her to feel better on her own terms um so that's really exciting. Um, definitely like, yeah, the purest in me <laughs> um, wants to just, you know, stop doing everything until she can be close. But also it's not re it's not realistic for, for me that way as well, because I, at this point in my journey, maybe later on, like once I've done this stuff for a long time, that won't be the case. But for me now, I would get burnt out. Like I need the variety of having the more insistent and dominant um play times as well as having the freedom based training the passive play time because i think it uh, i need to feel like we're also doing things and making progress and that i'm enjoying the relationship as well um and i do really enjoy the freedom based training i really enjoy the the freedom side um and i enjoy it more and more the more i do it um and I also think, you know, the more you do it, the better you get, the better you get, the faster it happens as well. Um, and so I want to incorporate as much of it as possible. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited about today. Today was really cool. I think... Um, gonna see how tomorrow goes in my mind i have this kind of one voice in the on the one hand that's saying like i think you should play just with freedom-based training for a week and just see how far you can get in a week with really good timing having that conversation trying not to push it and not having any of the expectations that is the really key thing i've taken away as well this week from the freedom-based training is like really really you have to let go of the like expectation like it's not even about the time frame it's about the expectation like the expectation that at some point this is going to get better you have to take that away and accept it for what it is like yes okay I would like the end goal of helping Mia to feel better about me coming closer to be that I can be with her but I, you can't like force that to happen you can't just be there and be like well now I'm here you should be okay with it you know um so yeah, so that is tough. It's really easy, so easy to slip back into, um, yeah, to slip back into, um, to trying to like hurry the process along without even realizing that that's what you're doing. Um, and it's also really easy to get stuck in a place but um you know you just keep trying come back the next day try again so yeah day 32 really really positive um about what's coming next really really positive about the clinic this weekend i was so so grateful to see elsa and yeah today's been really positive again 
Um, yeah. See what tomorrow brings.